What's going on everyone? Josh from Empty Church here, welcoming you back to another episode of As Seen on Sunday. And on this channel, we make videos to help you uh, be encouraged in your faith on the six days between Sundays when the church buildings are empty. So every week we kick off uh, this show with the verse of the week. Jonah chapter 4 verse 10 and 11 says, And the Lord said to Jonah, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. Should I not pity the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people? And now we move on to our weekly corporate confession where we confess our sins to God and ask for him to come and forgive us and heal our hearts. Would you join me? Oh my God, why? Why do you love us in our sin? Why don't you just leave us alone in our ignorant misery? I will never understand why you're so gracious toward us. I will never understand why you love us and why you spare us. Forgive me and let my heart be filled with gratitude that you do. You do love us. You do spare us. You do have mercy on us and you do forgive us. Amen. Nineveh repented. A revival broke out. All these sinful people turned to God. The story's over, right? That's the happy ending we're all looking for? What? What do you mean it's not over? There's more? What? Check the script. Script? What? Are you serious? It says here that Jonah was exceedingly angry and displeased. How could you be exceedingly angry and displeased when people repented and started serving the God that you proclaim? Are you serious? Did someone change the script on me? What? Well, I guess we're going to just have to find out why Jonah seems like such a mean person. Over and over again, we've talked about what Jonah's problem was. God told him to do something and he ran. And even though things seemed like they were on the up and up for Jonah after, I don't know, the whole whale vomiting issue, um, you would think like something like that would really change a person. Um, I mean, that's what we teach, right? Uh, God uses extraordinary events uh, to mold and shape our lives. And I don't know if it gets much more extraordinary than a fish um, swallowing you, being in that fish for a few days, and then being vomited up on land. Like, to me, that would be one of those extreme moments in life that God would use to change you. But it seems to me that Jonah's change didn't come. Yeah, sure, he went to Nineveh. Yeah, sure, he preached the message that God had told him to preach. Yeah, sure, the people relented and um, so the people repented and, and turned from their wicked ways and turned to God. But Jonah's heart, Jonah's heart didn't change. How come? Jonah chapter 4 kicks off with a description of Jonah as being extremely displeased or exceedingly displeased with God. And Jonah starts lecturing God on God's grace. He says, I told you, I knew this was going to happen, God. I knew if I went and preached this message that you were going to be kind and gracious and all these things were going to happen. And it makes me mad that these people were spared. And I know we've talked earlier about how shocking that is, but I just can't get over how um, someone who proclaims to be a prophet of God or someone who is a prophet of God can be upset that God's grace is shown. Um, think about what happens when we sit in our pews on Sunday mornings. Uh, we hear about uh, God's attributes that give us comfort and hope. They're the same attributes that Jonah uses to basically try to character assassinate God. 
Jonah says to God, I knew you were merciful. I knew you were steadfast in love. I knew you were forgiving. I knew you were full of grace and I hate you for it. Jonah was so angry with God um, over the same things that we find comfort and hope in. That's really crazy for us to think about today. How can someone be so mad at God for his love and his graciousness? But what if I told you that this extreme outburst of Jonah isn't really different than some of our outbursts that we have against God? See, Jonah was upset because God didn't act the way that Jonah wanted him to. Just like we don't act like when God doesn't act the way we want him to. We want God to bless us. We want God to coddle us. We want God to um, make our lives perfect and happy and nice. And when those things don't happen, we get angry at God. We share, whether we would like to admit it or not, we share the same heart attitude that Jonah had. And that's if, if God doesn't do things our way, we'll pout and we'll gripe. So what does God do to Jonah? He lets Jonah be angry and he lets him spout and he lets him be frustrated. I think there's a lesson in that for us. Oftentimes, uh, we can be taught to never tell uh, the truth to God, our truth to God, even if it's selfish and it's disgusting, kind of like Jonah's truth was disgusting. Um, God still allowed Jonah to voice um, that part of his heart. I think sometimes we need to be bold enough to tell God what our frustrations are. Maybe just for the only reason that God can look at us and say, do you know how foolish you sound? Do you see how the effects of sin are still wrapped around your heart? Um, but even so, I think that if we don't ever tell God the things that frustrate us, then we don't grow. Just like if we don't tell our spouses or our friends or our coworkers or our employers um, the things that are frustrating to us, then they'll never be addressed and you'll never get um, clarity on the situation and the relationship dies. God is big enough for us to spout our frustrations with, even if they sound ridiculous like Jonah's did. Jonah's frustrations sounded absolutely ridiculous to God, but yet God heard and then God answered. The story of Jonah continues with Jonah being out in the desert area that surrounded Nineveh and he was looking back on the city. Quite possibly he was looking back on the city to see if God changed his mind. He'd be like, ah, oh, maybe it's a couple of days out. You know, this whole repentance thing isn't going to stick and God's going to smite them anyway. I don't, I don't know, but it's possible. But Jonah's brooding in the desert and it's hot and God has mercy on Jonah and sends a plant to give him shade and give him comfort. But sometimes God brings us comfort. Um, as a way to set us up to teach us something. And this is what happened to Jonah. And the evening of the very same day, God sent a worm to attack that plant. And the plant died. And the next day, Jonah was left back out in the heat. And Jonah was uh, also um, the victim of a wonderful uh, wind storm that came. And life was miserable as he just waited and brooded in the desert. Looking back on the city, God made his life miserable. And Jonah just said, why don't you just let me die? Why don't you just, you know, end it for me? And at this moment, Jonah at his lowest places where God comes in and really begins to deal with the junk that's in Jonah's heart. And God says to Jonah, you pity this plant for which you did nothing for. Am I not supposed to pity a great city of all of these people? These people that I created? that I have loved, that I have been engaged in their entire lives as sovereign ruler and God. I'm not supposed to care for them, but it's okay for you to care about a plant. And that's the message of Jonah, that we as people want something different than what God wants. And sometimes that's very toxic in our lives. And God will do and has done and will continue to do extraordinary things to get our attentions to realign our hearts with his. When we hate other people, 
it will take a miracle of God, maybe a plant, maybe a fish, maybe whatever, to realign our hearts. But oftentimes when God is attempting to realign our hearts by making us a little bit uncomfortable, we mourn the loss of our creature comforts. We mourn the loss of the things that make us feel good about ourselves. And then we mope and we complain. The lesson that we should take away from this is maybe when things are getting tough on us, we need to turn back and ask God, what are you trying to teach me? What is it in my life that has gone off the rails? Because I don't know about you, I would much rather live a life that is trying to be tuned to the heart of God than to live a life that just continues in the sinful, sinful cycle of destruction that my heart has put me in. I don't want to end up in a belly of a whale. I don't want to end up in a desert. I want to end up having my heart healed and having my sins forgiven and having my life changed. Uh, so as you read the book of Jonah, don't forget to read the last chapter. You know, don't forget to finish off the story because the real story of Jonah isn't the big fish and the real story of Jonah isn't the great revival in Nineveh. The real story is that God will do anything and everything necessary to realign the hearts of his people to his cause and his purpose. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for tuning in and turning up. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We don't want you to miss anything that we do here at Empty Church. Uh, my name is Josh. You can follow me on Twitter. And don't forget to check out our website, www.empty.church. Uh, and I know it's not the same as being here with us, but you've just been to Empty Church as seen on Sunday. See ya.